Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Mauser Electronics, the electronic components distributor with the widest selection of the newest products, we're building armadillo cars, crashing helicopters, landing the grasshopper, and testing the first practical flying car. You know when you're stuck looking for a parking space during peak hours at the mall? Yeah, me neither. But no matter where you live, pollution and particularly parking has always been a real pain. Well, a group of researchers at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology might have a solution, a foldable, compact electric vehicle. The Armadillo T prototype is based on its namesake, the Armadillo. 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 The Armadillo as the research team imitated the animal's defense mechanism. You know, when it rolls up into a ball to avoid becoming lunch to a predator? The armadillo T tucks its rear body away, shrinking its nine-foot footprint into 5.5 feet. The car has four in-wheel motors and a 13.6 kilowatt-hour lithium battery that is housed in the front side. Once folded, it takes up to one-third of a 16-foot parking space. It also has a few other cool features. It can turn 360 degrees, making it easier to park, and the side mirrors have been swapped out in favor of cameras, which also reduce blind spots. The 1,000-pound car tops out at 37 miles per hour, so it's unlikely to be seen on a highway, but with only a 10-minute fast charge, it can travel up to 62 miles. Huh, kind of puts a whole new meaning on taking the top down. Terrafugia's flying car transition performed its first public demonstrations at this year's EAA Air Venture Show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Air Venture Show! <laughs> the 20 minute demonstrations included flight maneuvers over show center, converting from airplane to car, and driving along the flight line. Heralded as the first practical flying car, the Transition is a two-place, fixed-wing, straight-legal airplane that can fit easily into a single-car garage, be safely driven on the highway, and be flown in and out of general aviation airports. With glass cockpit avionics, carbon fiber construction, and innovative mechanisms, the Transition is fun and easy to fly, drive, and convert. According to Terrafugia, a steering wheel and gas and brake pedals on the ground make it familiar to drive, while stick and rudder pedals provide responsive controls in flight. Next stop, hoverboards and self-lacing shoes. Power laces, all right. So we all know about Elon Musk and all of his incredible ventures in the world of engineering. <laughs> Tesla, Hyperloop, Solar City, SpaceX, just a few. Well, this week, SpaceX managed to grab the world's attention again with the Falcon 9 test rig, also known as Grasshopper. The Grasshopper has already managed to fly 325 meters, that's over a thousand feet, into the air and land gracefully back on its takeoff point. Now, Grasshopper has successfully completed a divert test, meaning it flew 250 meters into the air and shifted 100 meters laterally before returning to the center of the launch pad. Keep in mind that Grasshopper is taller than a 10-story building. Yeah, not a big deal to be moving this thing around. SpaceX hopes to advance the Grasshopper system to the point where the rocket could be usable for space travel, giving the capability to not only save money, but get to other planets like Mars and return home. Because, you know, a giant radioactive red desert is not necessarily a place you want to spend the rest of your life. Next week, NASA researchers will drop a 45-foot CH-46 Sea Knight helicopter fuselage from 30 feet to test improved seats and advance experimental techniques and crashworthiness data. Man, I am in the wrong business. The former Marine helicopter airframe has been outfitted with accelerometers and nearly 40 cameras, which will record the fate of the 13 crash test dummies inside. During the test, onboard computers will record more than 350 channels of data as the helicopter is swung by cables, like a pendulum, into a bed of soil. Just before impact, pyrotechnic devices will blow the suspension cables to allow free flight. Like, really, really in the wrong line of work. 
The helicopter will hit the ground at about 30 miles per hour to represent a severe but survivable crash. And for the first time ever, technicians have installed a video game motion sensor to see how it tracks the dummy's movements. Technicians also painted a side in black polka dots over a white background for a photographic technique called full field photogrammetry. Each dot represents a data point that will be filmed by high-speed cameras capturing 500 images per second. After the drop, researchers will be able to plot and see exactly how the fuselage buckled, bent, cracked, and collapsed under the crash loads. The results will improve rotorcraft performance and efficiency, and researchers want the info to create more complete computer models that can be used to design better helicopters. Like, really, really in the wrong line of work. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For pd and TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.